Okay, let's look at example 9.2. In example 9.2, we have a, a circular, you know, a washer, say a disc, and we're supposed to determine the centroidal polar moment of inertia of this area by direct integration. And then part B, we're supposed to use the result of A to determine the moment of inertia with respect to a diameter. We'll come back to that. So, centroidal polar moment of inertia. What is how is polar moment of inertia defined? Well. J0 is defined as integral of r squared uh, dA. Well, let's define dA. They, okay, they did this with u. I'm going to not do this. I'm going to, just for explanation, I'm going to call this big R, and let's get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. I'm going to call this little r, and therefore this is dr. So my dA is what? It's my differential area. So what is my differential area? If I was to lay that out, it's the length of that, which is what? 2 pi r times the thickness, which is dr. Okay, so therefore j0 is integral from what to what? In this case, it's from 0 to big R, right? We're going from here all the way out to there of r squared dA, and in this case, dA is 2 pi r dr. Okay, so it's integral from 0 to r of uh, 2 pi r cubed dr, so therefore, oops, sorry, that's equal to 2 pi over 4 r to the fourth from 0 to big R, so that is equal to pi over 2 r to the fourth. So the polar moment of inertia of this bad boy is pi over 2, capital R to the 4th. So that's part A. Now part B, we're supposed to use that answer and determine the moment of inertia of the circle with respect to a diameter. Well, what is that saying? So it's saying with respect to, say, this axis right here, or this axis. So it's symmetric, so it's going to be the same, you know, which, whichever way we do it, right? So what we're supposed to figure out is what is Ix? Well, it's integral of y squared dA, right? But we don't want to do that. It's just going to be too hard. But what else do we know? We know that J0 is really Ix plus Iy. Okay. But we know more than that. We know that Ix is Iy because it's symmetric, right? It doesn't matter which axis. So therefore, J0 is Ix plus Ix or 2Ix. So Ix is one half of j0. So ix is just pi over 4 r to the fourth. So you can figure out ix or iy is a half of the polar moment of inertia.